Hello guys, so this is the part one of our review for engineering data analysis. Okay, so for the review, ito yung mga bagay na pag-aaralan natin. So number one, we have permutation and combination. Number two is the topic probability. Number three, sampling methods and descriptive statistics for samples. Number four, we have data collection. Number five, presentation of data. Number six, random variables. And then topic number seven will be planning and conducting surveys. So, counting reminders lang. If you are, I know you all look at, you are looking for a whole discussion or yung detailed discussion for these topics, I do not recommend this video. But for our review or if you are reviewing this and preparing for your examination and quizzes, then this is the video for you. So, let's go to our topic. So, first, we have here the formula. For your principle on counting. So, ito yung isa sa mga formula na gagamitin natin o kailangan alam mo kung paano gamitin or you are you are aware kung ano nga ba yung formula or yung gamit ng formula na ito. At the same time, kailangan memorize mo din tong mga formula na dito. So, for your principle on counting, this is your formula. It is your n or your total number of ways is equal to your n sub 1 multiplied by your n sub 2 multiplied by your n sub 3 multiplied by your n sub 4 and so on and so forth. So, for the principle on counting numbers, ang gagawin mo lang is you will just simply multiply the number of ways kung saan pwede mong i-arrange or pwedeng i-combine yung ating mga objects or yung ating mga options. So, we will have an example here. Let's go to our Google Jamboard. Okay, here. So, example, we have here a question. Sabi niya dito, a developer of a new div subdivision offers a prospective home buyer a choice of five designs. So, meron siyang five designs sa pagpipilian. Three different air conditioning systems, a garage or a carport, and a fascio or a screen porch. So, how many plants are available to this buyer? So, sabi ko nga, in your principle of counting ways, ang gagawin mo lang is you will just simply count the ways or the number of ways of the object na pwede mong gamitin, uh, pwede mong gawin, or yung mga options na pwede mong pagpilian. So, if you are finding the total number of plants available. So, syempre sabi dito, meron tayong limang design nung mismong subdivision. So, that is 5. You will just multiply it by 3 kasi we have three different air conditioning system. And then, we have here a garage or a carport. So, we have here 2. Okay? And then, we have also an option kung ano kung patio ba siya or a screen porch. That's why it is multiplied by 2. So, you will just simply 5, multiply by 3, multiply by 2, multiply by 2, and then therefore, the total number of ways for this is 60. So, ganun lang po yung ating principle of counting. You will just simply multiply yung mga options natin dito. So, 5 times 3 times 2 times 2. Okay, so more than that, let's go to the next na kailangan yung pag-aralan, yung tiyatawang natin factorial notation. So, we will be using this factorial notation sa mga susunod dating mga topics or sa mga susunod ating mga concepts na pag-aaralan. But for your factorial notation, it is just simply equal to your n factorial is equal to your 1 multiplied by 2 times 3 times 4 times 5 and so on and so forth times the n minus 2 my times the n minus 1 times n. So, kumbaga, you are just reaching the n digit here. Okay, so we have here an example of your factorial notation. There. For your factorial notation example, you are getting the 4 factorial so, your 4 factorial is just simply equal to your 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 is equal to 24. So, kung makikita nyo dyan, you are just, from that 4, you are just the, ano, descending on the descending order. Kukunin mo lahat ng mga integer, pababa, hanggang you reach the 1. So, that is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, and then multiply that, and then you will get 24. So, yun yung tinatawag natin factorial notation. So, next concept for our review, we have the permutation. When we say permutation, it is an arrangement of a set of an n object in a specified order. So, counting reminders lang, when we say permutation, we are very specific with the order. Uh, Kinukonsider niyo order o yung pagkakasunod-sunod ng ating object para makuha mo yung total number of ways kung paano mo siya ma-arrange. Okay, so we have here a formula for your permutation. Your permutation is simply equal to your n factorial over the quantity n minus r, close quantity factorial. So, we will have an example for your permutation. 
Okay, for your permutation example, we have here a question. If a 15 people won prizes in a lottery, assuming that there are no ties, so how many ways can this 15 people win the first place, the second place, third place, fourth place, and fifth place? So, kung titignan nyo dito, ilan yung mananalo? Meron tayong limang mananalo. The first, second, third, fourth, fifth. So, we are picking five out of 15 people na tataya sa ating lottery. So, the permutation or the number of ways for this, the permutation of ano, getting five or picking five in, on the 15 object. So, that is equal to your 15 factorial. That is the by n factorial over n minus r factorial. So, this is your n. This is your R for your formula a while ago. So this is 15 factorial, quantity 15 minus 5 factorial. And then if you will be calculating this or inputting it on your calculator, among one is 360, uh, 360,360 ways. So this is the answer for your permutation. So for your permutation, just simply follow this formula and factorial over N minus R factorial. Next is may yung tinatawag nating circular permutation. For your circular permutation is just the same ano it is a kind of permutation kung saan your arrangement is on round or loop order. So ito yung mga bagay na paikot or in a loop. Example of this is yung round table or your beads or your sitting arrangement on a square table since it is in a loop order pa rin. So for your circular permutation, the number of ways is simply counted or we are using the formula ano, that your permutation is equal to quantity n minus 1 factorial. So we have here an example for your ano, circular permutation. So how many ways can you arrange 7 people on a circular table? So using the formula, we have the permutation is equal to your n minus 1, or that is 7, since there are 7 people, so n is 7. 7 minus 1 factorial, 7 minus 1 is equal to 6. And 6 factorial is equal to 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And your 6 factorial is equal to 720 ways. So, ganun lang kasimple for your circular permutation. Ulitin lang natin, we are using the formula n minus 1 factorial. Okay, next, next, we have here the permutation with repetition. For your permutation with repetition naman, it is a special case of permutation kung saan meron tayo mga alike objects na kasama or merong mga objects na magkaparehas. Okay, so our formula for your permutation with repetition is your permutation is equal to your n factorial over n sub 1 factorial multiplied by your n sub 2 factorial multiplied by your n sub 3 factorial and so on and so forth until you reach the n ano, subscript r factorial. Okay, so we have here an example of your permutation with repetition. So, sabi niya dito, how many ways would could you arrange the letter of the word probability? And then kapag napapansin niyo dito, meron tayong mga letters na nauulit in the word probability. Ano ba yung mga letters na uulit dito? Una-una yung letter B. We have two letter B and then at the same time we have two letter I. So kapag inarrange mo itong mga, mga letters na to, to form another set of letters or it a word, then kapag meron kang mga objects dito na uulit, which is the BN, the I. And because of that, it is under the permutation with repetition. For the formula, it is N factorial over N1 one factorial, N2 factorial, N3 factorial, and so on and so forth. So for your total, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So 11 yung total number of objects natin. So that is 11 factorial since your N is equal to 11. And then yung per object, pili natin meron tayong isang P, so that is 1 factorial. Meron tayong isang R, so that is 1 factorial also. Meron tayong isang O, that is 1 factorial. Meron tayong dalawang B, so this is 2 factorial. Meron tayong isang A, so that is 1 factorial. Meron tayong dalawang I, so that is 2 factorial. Isang L, 1 factorial. Isang P, that is 1 factorial. And isang Y, so that is 1 factorial. So in short, the number of ways that you can arrange the letters of the word probability is 11 factorial over 1 factorial multiplied by 1 factorial multiplied by 1 factorial multiplied by 2 factorial multiplied by 1 factorial multiplied by 2 factorial multiplied by 1 factorial multiplied by 1 factorial multiplied by 
one factorial and then if you will get this your answer will become nine thousand and nine million nine hundred seventy nine thousand two hundred so this is your number of ways for this problem and this is under permutation with repetition again this is your working equation for your permutation with repetition Let's go now to combination. So, ano nga ba yung pinagkaiba ng combination with your permutation? For your combination, it is an arrangement of a set of objects where order does not count. So, pag sinabing combination, ang, ang iyong focus lang is yung pagkukombine ng mga objects na available where, in, where on, that, ano, on that mark, you are not considering the order or hindi ka masyadong sensitive kung sinong nauna. Diba? So, such problem na under ng combination is just like your lotto or your wetting problem where ano, wala ka namang pakailang kung sino yung mauuna. You have no rankings or you, wala kang tiyatawag na specific order. That's why it is under the topic combination or the problem combination. Okay, so again, if you are not counting the number of ways, kailangan mo muna i-identify whether it is combination and permutation so that you can arrive in two right answer. And for your combination, your formula is your combination is equal to n factorial over r factorial quantity n minus r close quantity factorial. So pag napansin nyo, ang pagkakaiba lang niya with the formula with your permutation is yung r factorial on the denominator. So example for your combination, let's go here. For your combination example, we have a problem. How many ways are there to select three candidates from eight equally qualified recent graduates for opening in an accounting form? So, kung makikita nyo dito, makapansin nyo, if you are hiring a, ano, a, an, an, employ, an employee, okay, and you are the employer, and then meron kang eight na, ano, eight na nag-apply, Wala ka namang pakialam kung sino yung una mong i ano una mong i hire yung ikalawa o yung ikatlo. Diba? Ang ang mahalaga lang you will be picking three candidates from the eight. Ibig sabihin wala kang pakialam kung sino yung una mong na-hire, kung sino yung pinakamagaling dun sa tatlo, but basta ang pinaka-importante is you will be hiring three. So you are not ano very sensitive or you're not considering the order of these three candidates na ipipick mo. And because of that, you are not ano, sensitive with the order. Therefore, it is under the problem of combination. So you have a total of n, object 8, and your r or you are picking 3. So your n is 8, your r is 3. And then if you will be using the formula, that is n factorial over r factorial, quantity n minus r factorial. So that is 8 factorial over 3 factorial, quantity 8 minus 3 factorial. And then if you if you will be calculating that the total number of ways that you can hire or the the I know the three candidates from E is equal to fifty six ways. Okay, again, for your combination, your formula is equal to n factorial over r factorial over n minus r factorial. Okay, so more on that. Let's go to our next topic. Okay, sabi dito the definition of your sample space. Sabi dito is it is the set of all possible outcomes of a statistical experiment. So meaning, when we say sample space, ito yung all possible outcomes or ito yung lahat ng mga pwedeng lumabas during the experiment or during count, ano, the, ano, the event na gagawin mo. Okay, so that is the total possible ways. On the other hand, meron tayo tiyatawag na event and then your event is a subset of a sample space. When we say subset, it is a part or a portion of your sample space. So again, your sample space is yung lahat. Yung event naman is yung parte nung yung statistical experiment, etc., etc. Okay, and then we have here the probability. And in, if you are going to get the probability, it is just simple, is simply equal to your n over the capital N, where your small n is the event or the number of ways of that event, that is specific event na kukunin mo, and then over divided by your n, or the capital N or the sample space or the total possible outcome of your ano, of your event or of the statistical experiment. Okay, so if we will have an example for your probability, let's go here and then here. Okay, so for your probability, let's have this as an example. Determine the probability of an even number appears in a single dose of a fair dice. Okay, so bibilangin natin yung probability 
na ang lalabas is even number kapag nag-roll ka ng dice. And then if you can ano, if you can remember for your dice, meron tayong ano, meron tayong anim na pwedeng lumabas na outcome. That is your 1 2 3 4 5 and the number 6. Okay? And then kapag nakita mo doon, so the our n is or the total outcome is 6. And then yung sabi niya dito, the probability of getting an even number and then dun sa anim na yun, meron lang tayong ano, tatlong even number. That is the number 2, number 4, and number 6. So since we have three possible outcome na even siya, so your event is, or your small n is 3. So 3 divided by 6, you will be getting the ano, probability of getting an even number in a toast of a fair dice, which is 3 over 6, or simply equal to 0.5 or one half. Next problem for your probability example, we are determining the probability of a king appears in a draw in drawing a single card from an ordinary pack of 52 cards. So we have here 52 cards in total. Meron tayong 52 cards in total doon sa deck of cards. And then kailangan makabunot ka ng king in one draw. And then, if you will be counting it, kung ilan yung king, meron tayong apat na king. Yung king of hearts, king of diamonds, king of spades, and king of the clubs. Okay? So, meron tayong total of four. Apat na king doon sa ating deck of cards. That's why your n, small n, is equal to four. And your total outcome or your capital N is 52. Simply, that is 4 out of 52. And then, if you will be getting the, I know, the simplified version of this, so it's, that is simple na, 4 out of 52. Or you can round off that into 2 out of 26. Okay. Next question we have here. Determine the probability of a white marble of a white Ano, appears in drawing a single marble from an urn containing four white, three red, and five blue marbles. So, kukunin mo daw yung chance mo na makabunot ka ng white marble kung meron kang container na ang laman is meron siyang apat na white, tatlong red, at five na blue. And what you will do is that you will get the end, the capital, kung ilan yung possible outcome. So, your possible outcome is equal to 4 plus 3 plus 5, which is equal to your 12. 4 plus 3 plus 5 is 12. So, your total outcome is 12. And then, ang kailangan mong kun is yung probability na makabunan ka ng white. And then, meron ka lang total of 4 white marble. So, that is 4 for your small n. Therefore, the probability of getting a white marble is equal to 4 divided by 12. Or that is simply equal to... 2 out of 6 or simply 1 third. Okay, so you have a probability of 1 third of getting a white marble from an orange containing 12 marbles. Okay, next, let's go to the properties of probability. For the properties of probability, meron lang tayong tatlong kailangan tandaan. The positiveness or yung probability is always a positive number. Ibig sabihin, it could not be lower than 0 and it could not be higher than 1 because your probability is greater than 0 but lesser than or equal to 1. Therefore, yung mapa, hindi ka pwede magkaroon ng probability which is negative number or negative 0 0.1 or negative 1. That is not a valid probability. Also, you will not have a probability, probability such as 1.1 or 1.5. Ang iyong probability is between 0 and 1 only. And then meron tayong tinatawag na probability of sure event. And then your probability of sure event is equal to 1. Ibig sabihin that your event is very sure or very certain na mangyayari siya. That's why it is called a sure event. Next is meron tayong tinatawag na probability of an empty set. And then the probability of your empty set is equal to 0. Meaning, hindi mangyayari or impossible mangyari yung event na tinutukoy mo. So, this is the three properties of probability that you need to remember. Okay, so let's move on. Let's go to Slovin's formula. Slovin's formula is used to get the ideal sample size for a given population. 
So, kung kunin mo, you are using this, Stoven's formula, para makuha mo yung sample size na gagamitin mo kung meron kang population N na given. We have here an example for our slow, using the usage of Sloven's formula. Example, we have here, find the number of samples needed to study a population of 10,000 using a 0 0.05 tolerance error. Okay, for your tolerance error, you only have two tolerance error that is commonly used for your Sloven's formula, your 0 0.05 and your 0 0.01. For this problem, it uses your 0 0.05. Simply, for to solve the problem, you just need to simply substitute the value. So your sample size is equal to your population over 1 plus the population multiplied by the tolerance error squared. Therefore, that is 10,000 over 1 plus quantity 10,000 multiplied by 0 0.05 squared. Therefore, if you calculate this, you will be getting 385 samples. So you need 385 samples para magkaroon ka ng ideal research or ideal experiment from the 10,000 total population. Okay, so more on that. More on your slow formula, we have here the sampling methods. Itong sampling methods, these are the methods used in getting your sample or ito yung mga way para makakuha ka ng iyong mga samples. Okay, so and it is divided into two. We have two kinds of sampling method. First is yung tinatawag ating probability sampling. And then next is yung non-probability sampling. For your probability sampling, it is I know, randomly selecting your sample. On the other hand, for the non-probability sampling, you are, it is not randomly selected or your sample is not randomly selected. Under your probability sampling, we have five. First is the simple random sampling, and then the keyword for your simple random sampling is that each element has an equal and independent chance of being included. Ibig sabihin, lahat ng sample mo meron silang same chance na makuha as a sample. Since you do not have any criteria or you do not have any grouping na gagawin in choosing your sample. On the other hand, we have here the second type of probability sampling, the systematic sampling. And the keyword there is, you know, it sort elements according to their assigned number. So you are sorting elements by group, or you are, you know, assigning number to sa mga elements, and then you will randomly pick to sa assigned number mo. Okay, so that is your systematic sampling. And then on the other hand, we have here the third one, the stratified sampling. For the stratified sampling, the keyword is group according to strata, because since it is stratified, the keyword is strata, or strata is, you know your criteria, that is your certain criteria on grouping. Meron kang criteria for grouping. On the other hand, we have here the fourth one, the cluster sampling. You are grouping your sample according to geographical location. So the keyword here is the geographical location. And then next is the multi-stage sampling. For the multi-stage sampling, it is a complex form of cluster sampling. That is the keyword. So this is your, your probability sampling. And these are the five with their keywords na pwedeng lumabas. And then next is, we have here the non-probability sampling. And then under that, meron tayong apat. The first one is the convenience sampling. It is selected based from the convenience of the researcher. The keyword there is based from the convenience of the researcher. So bahala yung researcher kung ano yung feeling niyang ano, mag-benefit siya from ano, making it a sample, then yun yung people niya. Next is, we have here the quota sampling. For the quota sampling, it is similar to your stratified sampling. But the samples are not randomly selected. So, in makes to be him, you will be grouping your samples into strata or into groups with a specified classification or specified criteria. And then from there, pipili ka ng sample mo. And then we have here the third one for the non-probability sampling, the judgment sampling. For the judgment sampling, it depends entirely on the judgment of the researcher. So, yun yung pinaka keyword niya. So, depende sa judgment ng researcher kung sino yung kukunin yung sample. And then, the last one, we have here the snowball sampling. And then, the snowball sampling is also called the chain referral sampling. Because, ano, you will be, ano, because, ano, it is used when your data or your sample is very rare na mahirap siyang hanapin. And then, you, if you have one sample, then you will be asking a referral from that sample kung meron pa siyang kakilala with the same characteristic. 
or the same criteria that you are finding. That's why nagkaroon ng tiyatawag na chain referral sampling because you are ano, finding referral from them. Okay, so that is your sampling methods. More on that, we go to your measure of location. For your measure of location, we have three things to remember or three measures of location na kailangan pag-aralan or i-familiarize your mean, median, and mode. And then for your mean, the formula is, ano, is equal to the summation of your x or your objects over the n or the total number of objects. We have here, ano, and then the median, before we go to the example, median is the middle term or the middle item in the data after sorting. So after sorting your data, you will get the middle item kung ano yung nasa gitna nila. And then for the mode, it is the most frequent item in the data set or ito yung pinakamadalas or yung naulit or pinakamadalas maulit na data or pinakamadalas maulit na result. So we have here an example for your measure of location. There. For your measure of location example, we have here a problem. From the given set of data, ang data natin is 4, 9, 3, 6, 4. Find the mean, median, mode. Yun muna tayo. Range, variance, and standard deviation. So focusing on your, ano, on your measure of location, the mean, median, and mode. For the mean, you will simply get the summation of your x over n. Or this is actually your average. You will just average this data. So that is 4 plus 9 plus 3, plus 6, plus 4. You will just simply add this over the number of items that is 5 items or 5 objects. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then you will get the mean which is 5.2. On the other hand, for your median, you will simply arrange this into order. It's either ascending order or descending order. For this part, we arrange it on ascending order. So this lowest value is 3 followed by 4, the one 4, and then we have the 6, and then we have the 9. And then if you are getting the mean, you are getting the ano, mid, middle term, and the middle term is 4, kasi ito, we have here 3, 4, okay, so the middle term is your 4, and that will become your median. For the mode naman, kukunin mo yung nauulit or yung most frequent na result, and then for this problem, ang nauulit lang is 4, or this is the most frequent one, 4. So your mode is also 4. Okay? Let's go to the measure of variability. For the measure of variability, tatlo lang yung kailangan mong tandaan. We have the range, variance, and the standard deviation. For the range, it is equal to your highest value minus lowest value. So ibig sabihin, yung pinakamataas na value mo, isusubtract mo siya with your pinakamababang value. For the variance, it yung sinusundan natin formula. The symbol for your variance is, ano, is S squared. And that is equal to the summation of your quantity X minus X bar, or your mean, squared over N minus 1. So, ibig sabihin, you will just so, ano, get the summation of ano, your X that is subtracted with your mean, and then squared it, and then you will be dividing it to the total number of objects minus 1. And for the standard deviation, that is actually the square root of your variance. So going to the example, on the same example here, so you, I know, the data is 4, 9, 3, 6, 4, 4, and we will be getting the range, the variance, and the standard deviation. For the range, you will just get the highest value. The highest value is 9, and the lowest value is 3. So for the range, that is 9 minus 3. And that will become 6. 6 ang ating range. For the variance naman, we will be following this formula. And then the first data is 4. So 4 minus your mean. Your mean is 5.2 squared plus quantity. The second is 9 minus 5.2 squared plus 3 minus 5.2 squared plus 6 minus 5.2 squared plus your 4 minus 5.2 squared. Okay, this is 5.2. This is a uh, typographical error. Over your ano, total number of objects, that is 5 minus 1. And then, if you will be calculating this, the final answer will become 5.46. Okay, more than that, for the standard deviation, it is simply the square root of your variance. So, the square root of your 5.46 is equal to 2.34. And that is your measure of location and measure of variability. Let's go to the next.
concept that you need to remember in order for you to pass the exam and the quizzes. So we have here the term is statistics. So statistics deals with the systematic collection, presentation, analysis, and interpretation of numerical data. So when we say statistics, it is actually the systematic ano, collection, presentation, analysis, interpretation of numerical data. When you ano, you do the collection, the presentation, analysis, and interpretation of data, that is actually called statistics. And then there are two types of statistics, the descriptive statistics and the inferential statistics. For the descriptive statistics, it is ano, the collection and presentation of data. While for the inferential statistics, it is the analysis and interpretation of data. So collection and presentation, analysis and interpretation. Okay, for your data, your data is also, another term for your data is actually information. And then yun yung keyword mo, pina keyword mo if you are ano, having the data, the definition of data. And then for your data, meron tayong ano, dalawang subcategories. You can categorize it into a primary data or secondary data, or you can categorize it into a qualitative or quantitative data. For the primary data, it is the first-hand information. Ibig sabihin, if you are the researcher, ano, you have the primary data kapag nag-conduct ka ng research, gumawa ka ng study mo, or ikaw yung nag-conduct ng survey, or ikaw yung nag-conduct ng questionnaire, or na interview, then that is called primary data kasi ikaw mismo yung kumuha or nag-acquire ng information. On the other hand, when we say secondary data, it is the information collected by others an example, you I know you read the newspaper and then you acquired data there. And since it is a second hand information, it is under the secondary data. Or example, merong research yung ano yung ibang tao and then sinabi niya yung certain probability or certain percentage of something and then in acquire mo or in adopt mo yung data niya and then that is called secondary data since hindi sa yung galing yung data originally you just adopted it and the next is ano qualitative data when we say qualitative data it is qual ano pertaining to quality and it is non numerical on the other hand for the quantitative data it is a numerical data meaning it is using numbers to i know present the information next we have here the data collection when we say data collection it is the process of collecting or gathering information so those are the terms that you need to master or you need to be aware of or you need to be ano, familiar with. Under next, we have here the presentation of data. Uh, there are three ways of presenting your data. The yung natin textual presentation, tabular presentation, and graphical presentation. For your textual per, ano, presentation, it is in the form of words, sentence, and paragraph. So, kapag yung data mo present mo with words and as paragraph, ang tawag is textual presentation. For tabular presentation, it is arranged in columns and rows. Ibig sabihin, kumagamit ka ng table and presenting your data. And then, yung table natin is, uh, na ginagamit is na madalas is yung tiyatawag ating frequency distribution table that we will be presenting later on. And then, the last one of way to present your data is yung tiyatawag ating graphical data or graphical presentation, I mean. And it is in the form of line and curve. So example of this is your line graph, bar graph, pie chart, and histogram. So let's go. Let's have an example of how you will present your data. Okay, here. So example, we have here I know, a problem, or right? We have here the data. Sabi dito, the manager of a department store currently received customer feedback saying that customers have a long waiting time in being served by the sales representative. The manager do some observation of the waiting time of 20 customers. So you have 20 customers here. You observe 20 customers and list down the following observation. So yung 20 customer mo, ito yung waiting time nila. Merong nag, ano, wait for 43 seconds, 42, 36, 46, 38, 31, 45, 36, 44, 45, 40, 54, 50, 46, 48, 37, 32, 43, 46, and... 31 seconds. So, yun yung data mo from that 20 customer. So, right now, if you will be presenting it into a textual presentation, ano, maybe you can, ano, after, ano, after gathering the data, you have discovered that, ano, sabi dito, the 20 observation gave a minimum waiting time of 31 seconds, 
So, napansin mo na ang pinakamababa or ang pinaka-lowest na waiting time is 31 seconds. And ang maximum waiting time of 54 seconds. 54 seconds yung nakita mo pinakamataas. And then, the average mean or the average waiting time in is 41.65 seconds. So, you just simply, ano, ano, some, some, ano, get the sum of it and then divide it into 20. Nakuha mo yung iyong average, which is 41.65 seconds. And most of the customer wait for 46 seconds. So, nakita mo dito na ang kanyang mode is 46 kasi naulit yung 46 mo ng dalawa, tatlong beses. So, your mode is 46. So, that is your textual presentation. Kumbaga, you are presenting your data into text or into words, sentences, and paragraphs. Ano, more on that, we have here that ano, tabular presentation. And then, for your tabular presentation, we have here the frequency distribution table. For your frequency distribution table, you will just simply divide your data into ranges. In here, it uses a range of 5. So, 30 to 35, from 36 to 40, 41 to 45, 46 to 50, and 51 to 54. So, 5 yung ginamit niyang range. So, you can decide when on what range you will use, make, but make sure that you can present your data clearly or accurately with that range. Hindi pwedeng masado matas yung range mo, Kasi pag sobrang laki yung range mo, makukuha na lahat ng data, hindi mo makikita yung frequency niya ng mas maganda. And then, hindi rin pwede masyadong mababa kasi maging scattered na yung data mo masyado. So, you just go to the ano, average or yung medyo magandang presentation or yung perfect way to separate or to, ano, to have the range. Okay, so for this, we, ano, we have the range of ano, 5. And then, ano, kapag pumunta ka sa data mo, here, meron tayong 30 to 35. For your 30 to 35, meron tayong tatlo. Tatlong data. That is 1, 31. Um, let's go here. 2, 31. And then 3, 32. So, for your 30 to 35, meron tayong 3 customer. Or number of customer na naghantay ng 30 to 35 seconds. On your 36 to 40, meron daw tayong 5. Na naghantay from 36 to 40. So, we have here 1. And then two, uh, three, okay, four, and where is the other one? I had apat. Okay, one, two, I can't see. And then again, 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 uh, 36 to 40. 36 to 40, that is 1, okay, 2, 3, 36, 4, I can see the other one. Okay, so for the data, sabi dito, you just find it there. Meron siyang lima. And for your 41 to 45, may anim. For your 46 to 50, meron lima. And for 51 to 54, meron tayong isa. So you will just count kung ilan yung pumapasok dun sa range mo. Okay, and then after that, you will get the frequency or kung ilan. And then for the percentage, you will just simply get it by dividing this with the total number. So 3 divided by, we have 20 customers. So 3 divided by 20, that is 0 0.15 times 100, that is 15%. And then dito naman, 5 divided by 20, so that will become 0 0.25 times 100, that is 25. Okay, so you will just divide this with the total number of customers. And the more common percentage, kung ilan yung nag ano naglalay with your range. So this is your ano frequency distribution table. So dito mo nilagay yung range mo ng waiting time. Ito yung tawag nating frequency na column. And here is your percentage na column. And that is your frequency distribution table. Another way to present your data is yung tawag nating line graph. So makukuha mo to, or you can ano you can base this line graph according to what you have got on your frequency table. And then, kung napapasiyo dito, this is your ano, ranges kanina na ginamit mo. From 30 to 35, 35 to 4, 36 to 40, 41 to 45, 46 to 50, and 51 to 54. And then, yung frequency, meron kang 3 doon, 5, 6 na frequency, this part, this frequency. Diba? Yun yung nilagay mo dito as your ano, y-axis. For the x-axis, waiting time, y-axis is yung frequency. And then you will just plot it there, plot here, merong anim, may lima, and then merong...
from isa and then you will just connect the lines and then that is your line graph on the other hand we have here the bar graph the same ito yung ano ito yung ranges mo kanina for your x axis yung waiting time and then yung at yung y axis is your frequency you will simply plot hanggang dito yung ano 3 5 kanina 6 as yung 5 kanina tas 1 and you will just ano draw a bar graph here hanggang dito to yung ano frequency niya ganyan just like that so it is your way of presenting your data and then kapag napansin mo mas madali siyang intindihin kaysa doon sa ating table kanina frequency distribution table another way is yung graphical presentation and then ang ginamit niya dito instead of frequency is yung percentage we have with the 5% 15% 24% and then dito kinuha niya dito per the range so he uses the range and the percentage to present your pie graph okay so for from ano for 30 to 35 percent 36 to 40 25 percent 41 to 45 30 percent 46 to 50 25 percent and then 51 to 54 5 percent and then you will just make a pie and then divide this into certain parts so yan yung kita ang ating pie chart and then ito nilagyan nyo ng konting legend para hindi ka malito or magkaroon ka ng presentation yan okay next let's move on to ano, ano, another way of presenting your, ano, your data, that is the ano, histogram under the graphical presentation pattern. It is ano, just parang the same show with your ano, bar graph, yung itsura niya, but it just looks like this. And then parasang din, your x-axis is your waiting time and your y-axis is your frequency. Parang ano. So this is yung tinatawag natin histogram. Okay, more than that, for your presentation of data, let's go to your... Ano, Random experiment. When we say random experiment, your experiment is ano has an out outcome that cannot be predicted. Ibig sabihin hindi certain or hindi exacto yung ano yung probability or yung outcome ng iyong experiment. Kaya nga tinawag na random experiment because it cannot be predicted. And under your random experiment, meron tayong tinatawag na random variable. And it is a function that assigns a real number of each outcome in the sample space of a random experiment. So, ibig sabihin, ano, you are assigning real numbers doon sa outcome ng random experiment na hindi ma-predict. Diba? And then, for your random variables, meron tayong two types of random variables. Your discrete random variable and your continuous random variable. For your discrete random variable, ano, it, it has a countable number of possible ways. So, kapag countable, or pwede, ano, pwede mong bilangin yung ano, number of ways of, your, ano, of that thing, of your random variable, Ang ginagamit is yung discrete random variable. And then, if it is uncountable, ang ginagamit is yung continuous random variable. Okay, so for countable, discrete random variable. For uncountable, we are using continuous random variable. Okay, so for your discrete random variable, this is your working formula. For your mean, your mean is equal to the summation of your x multiplied by your f of x. Or your f of x is actually the frequency your x is your object or your ano, your event. Okay? And then for your variance, your variance is, you know, is equal to the summation of your x minus u squared. Okay? Multiplied by your f of x. So that is your x minus mu. Mu is your mean. So, you, ano, parang nalagdala na ng minus. And then you will squared it. Multiply by f of x. And then for your standard deviation, that is the square of your variance. Okay, so having an example, para mas maintindihan natin itong working formula of your discrete random variable here. Okay, so let's have here the question, let x be the number of the candies inside a one pound candy box. If in a random selected boxes, the number of candies has the following distribution. So ito yung, ano, yung ating x's or yung value of x, meron tayong 100 candies dun sa, ano, 105 sa 110, yung number of candies. And then yung frequency niya, na magkaroon ka ng 100 candies is 0 0.03. For your 105 candies, ang ano, frequency niya is 0.91. And for your 110 candies, ang frequency mo is 0 0.06. So for your 100, 0.03, 105.91, and your 110 is 0 0.06. Then right now, we will be getting the mean. Your mean is simply equal to the summation of x multiplied by the frequency. Okay, and this is your 
x, this is your frequency. And ano, first, we have 100. Yun yung una mong x. Multiply by its frequency, 0 0.03. Okay? And then plus the second one, 105. And then multiply by its frequency. And then plus your 110 multiplied by its frequency, 0 0.06. And then if you will get the value, you will have 105.2. Or it is approximately 106. 106 yung ginamit niya. Okay. And then next is we have here the variance. For the variance, uh, uh, your variance is simply equal to the summation of your x. Quantity x minus u squared multiplied by its frequency. Again. So for this, gagamitin natin yung value na kuha natin for your mean. And your mean is ano, 106. And therefore, your x minus u or your first is 100. Minus your mean, 100 minus 6 squared, multiplied by its frequency, 0 0.03, plus your second, 105, minus your mean, squared it, multiplied by the frequency, which is 0.91, and then next is your 110, minus your mean, which is 106, squared, multiplied by its frequency, which is 0 0.06. And then after that, if you will be getting the value of this, you will come up into a value which is 2.95. On the other hand, for your standard deviation, that is the square root of your variance, that is square root of 2.95, and that we're under our standard deviation is 1.72. Okay, more on that. Let's go to the other one. Next is our continuous random variable. This is for uncountable list of outcome. And then for its formula, your mean is simply equal to your, I know, the integration of your x, from the ano, from the positive infinity to the lower ano, from the negative infinity or your high uh, high limit ano, over the ano, to the lower limit and then we have here ano, your x multiplied by f of x dx okay for your variance your variance is equal to your e x squared uh, minus your mu or your mean and where your ex squared is equal to the integration of your x squared multiplied by fx dx, okay, from your lower limit, which is negative infinity, to the higher limit, which is positive infinity. And then for your standard deviation, that is simply equal to the square root of variance. Para maintindihan nyo itong ating working formula, we will be having an example here for your continuous random variable. So find the mean, the variance of the standard deviation of a continuous random variable x having the following distribution. So your function is actually equal to your x uh, know, to zero, where your x is greater than or equal to zero, but lesser than or equal to one. It makes it mean your value of x is uh, know, greater than zero, but lesser than one. It makes it mean the range is from one or from zero to one. Your value is from 0 to 1. Hindi pwedeng maging lower than 0, hindi pwedeng maging higher than 1. So that will become your limit for this continuous random variable, for this problem. So getting your mean, your formula is x, integration of your x, fx dx, from, the, ano, from negative infinity to your positive infinity. So getting here, your f of x is equal to your x in this part. Because this is 0 long then. So your fx is equal to your x, or this is your x, yung ating value. So your x, this is your x, multiplied by your x dx, okay? Kasi ano, sabi nga dito is your x times f of x, since your f of x is x, kaya this x times your f of x, which is x. So papayta mo lang yung f of x mo dito with this, okay? That is x. Okay, so x multiplied by x dx. Kapag pinagsa, pwede mong pag-combine itong dalawang x na to, so that will become x squared dx. And then, kukunin mo integration niya from 0 to 1. So, the integration of this using your power rule, that will become 2 plus 1, so that it will become x cubed. And then, ano, 1 over n minus 1, ay n plus 1. And then, that is 2 plus 1, so that is 3. So, your the integration of your x squared dx is x cubed over Okay, and then your limit is from 1 to 0. So, lower, ano, from, ano, higher limit minus the lower limit, substitute it. So, substituting the 1, so that will become 1 cube over 3, or 1 cube is equal to 1, so that is 1 over 3. For your higher limit, we have 1 third minus your lower limit, which is 
zero to. So, zero cube over three. So, zero over three is zero. So, your lo lower limit is zero. So, that will become one third minus zero. And then your final answer is one third. On the other hand, for your variance, your variance is equal to your ano, ex squared minus u ano, mean squared. So, kailangan kunin mo muna tong ex squared. For your ex squared, that is the integration of your x squared, fx dx, from your positive infinity, uh, negative infinity to your positive infinity. Therefore, your x squared is equal to your fx. Your fx is x. So, that is x squared, x dx. Ito yung fx mo. You just substitute the value of, uh, ano, of your fx, f sub x. And then, you can simplify this. x squared times x. Or you can combine this. That will become x cubed. So, you're getting the integration of your x cubed dx from 0 to 1. 0 to 1. Our, our limit is 0 to 1 kasi nakuha natin dito kanina. That, that is from 0 to 1. Okay. Next is getting the integration of x cubed dx power formula. So, I know that is x n plus 1 over n plus 1. Okay. So, 3 plus 1 that is 4. So, that will become x raised to 4 over n plus 1. That is 3 plus 1, so ano, over 4. So that is x raised to 4 over 4. And your limit is from 1 to 0. So using the higher limit, substitute your 1 here. So 1 raised to 4 is 1. So that will become 1 fourth. That is your higher limit. Using your lower limit, that is 0. So 0 raised to 4 is 0. 0 over 4 is 0. So your lower limit is 0. So higher limit minus the lower limit, 1 fourth minus 0, that will become 1 fourth. That is for your variance. And getting for your variance, we have here your nakomuning yung ex squared. Your ex squared is one fourth. And then yung mu mo kanina or yung min mo kanina is one third. So that is mu squared is one third squared. And then if you will calculate this one, your answer will be five over 36. Okay, next, we will get the standard deviation. For your standard deviation, it is simply equal to your square root of your ano, variance, which is 5 out over 36. So, if you will get the square of your 5 over 36, the answer will become square of 5 over 6. Okay, so that is for your ano, ano, continuous random variable. Next is we have here the survey. For your survey, ang ibig sabihin ng survey is it, ano, it is one of the methods of conducting research. And then for your survey, mayroon tayong dalawang types or dalawang pwedeng gawin. In, in having a survey, it's either you will be conducting a questionnaire. A questionnaire is a paper and pencil instrument administered to respondent. So, this is your way. Kapag paper and pencil, or yung meron kang pinapasagutan na paper, uh, it is called the questionnaire. On the other hand, if you are using verbal communication with the respondent, it is called the interview or using, using your interview. So, there are two ways of conducting your survey. It is either you will conduct a questionnaire or an, in, an interview. And then we have here the steps in planning a survey na kailangan mong tandaan that you need to be familiarized. First way, our first step is that you need to ano, you need to know what is the purpose of the survey, kung para saan ba yung iyong survey. Ano, step two is to decide on the target group. Kailangan siyempre, kung alam mo na kung ano yung purpose ng survey mo, Kailang alam mo din kung sino yung survey mo, kung sino yung target na sample mo. The third one or the third step is how do you reach your target group? Syempre kapag alam mo na kung sino yung target mo or kung sino yung gagawin mong sample, you need to have a way or kailangan mag-isip ka ng way on how to approach them or how to reach them, on how to ano, to conduct questionnaire and interview to them. If you need to set an appointment, set an appointment, etc., etc. Next is break down the purpose and limit the scope. Siyempre, may hirap naman kapag masyadong wide yung iyong, ano, yung, iyong isa survey. So, you need to break it down into the purpose. Kailangan alam mo yung mga each purpose and then you need to limit the scope. Kung ang iyong, ano, kung ang iyong, ano, population is about something that is wide, mas maganda siguro kapag i, ano, i, na narrow down mo siya. Example, if your, ano, if your, ano, population or yung target group mo are, ano, students of FINMA, Maybe you can consider the CS students only para medyo ma-limit yung scope mo that you will ano you can say that you are focusing on the ano the CS uh, student only parang ganun. you need to ano, know the you know break down or limit your scope and then the last step is ano 
what question should the survey contain and write a draft. So, bago ka mag-conduct ng survey, dapat meron ka ng draft or meron ka ng mga set of questions kung ano yung maitatanong mo para hindi ka na mag ano, hindi ka na masyadong mahirapan when you are conducting the survey. Diba? Ano, you can uh, you can have naman an improved ano, you can have an additional question naman, pero mas maganda kung meron ka ng ano, set of questions and then you will just add some kung kailangan. And that is your steps in planning a survey. Okay, so that's all. Yun lahat yung topic natin from ano, seven topics of your ECE 069 engineering data analysis. Uh, we have scoped and uh, we have tackled the concepts about permutation and combination, probability, sampling methods, descriptive statistics for samples, data collection, presentation of data, random variables, and planning and conducting surveys. So that is the summary. And then that is our review for its concept. So I hope that you understand it. And then you have, I know you have learned a lot from it. And then I hope na you have reviewed it enough or nalinawan kayo sa some of the concepts. And then nakita nyo kung ano yung mga important parts or yung mga bagay na kailangan nyo maalala, yung mga keywords for some definitions, and then yung mga formula na kailangan yung memorize or kailangan yung i-familiarize kung paano gamitin. So that's all for the discussion. I hope that you got ano, a perfect score for your quiz and examination. And then ano, I, will be, ano, I will be uploading then this summary or this, ano, this review material. Tinakita yung PDF here and also the Jamboard here. I will be uploading it para makita yung mga examples na ginamit natin. So that's all for this ano, part one of the review of your engineering data analysis. Uh, thank you for, I know, for having this review. And then I hope that you got a perfect score for your examination and quizzes. So that's all. Bye, guys. And see you again on the next part of your review.